Okay, in this video I'm going to uh, take a look at how the backtrack functions can be used uh, to help create hard surface objects inside of ZBrush. I'm going to begin by loading up the polysphere. I'll draw it onto the canvas and make it editable. I'll use the new clipping brushes to trim off a portion of this object. and then another portion they're giving us a nice hard edge now the clipping brushes give us nice hard surface edges and in many cases we can go back through and just simply use the smoothing tools or the smoothing brush to round out those shapes and that gives us a nice rounded bevel you'll notice though that when we get shapes like this if we start to brush over that using the smoothing brush it really doesn't round that edge out or smooth that edge out. The reason for that is that as we use the clipping brushes, it's mashing everything down to this one surface plane. And then as we mash everything on this edge down to this plane, everything's meeting up right here. And we can see that all those polygons are ganged up along that one edge. Now, we could go through and simply take that uh, object and run a relax on it and that's going to allow us to smooth that edge out a little bit more. That certainly works. However, we can use uh, the backtrack options to help give us a nice bevel on that edge as well. So that's what we're going to take a look at. I'll begin by going to my stroke menu and docking that over into the tray. And then I'm going to switch over to the trim dynamic trails brush. So B for brushes. T for trim, and we'll see dynamic trails. That's again the T button right there. One of the things you'll notice about the trim dynamic trails brush is that as you begin brushing over, it carves into your surface pretty well, and that does give a nice beveled edge. There are other brushes that can do the same thing. The uh, planar spline cut does a pretty good job as well, but trim dynamic trails, uh, because of uh, the different ways that the trim brushes work, uh, tends to produce really good results across the board. The main problem with this is that this bevel is uneven, and so that begins to um, introduce us to or the need for the backtrack uh, tools. Backtrack is a subset of the lazy mouse, so in order to get this turned on, we'll go ahead and activate lazy mouse, and now that that's on, you'll see down below in our stroke menu the backtrack option. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Now the type of backtrack that we uh, use is based upon the option set just below this. And the four different types in here will determine or will provide different looks. The plain backtrack option looks at the uh, polygon normals coming off of a flat plane and tries to flatten everything so that they match up to that one plane when you begin to click and drag. So for example, if we start off with something like the clay tubes brush and begin to put some surface deformation onto this, if we simply switch over to a brush, for example, like the planar brush, you'll notice that the planar brush itself is using backtrack with the plane option. As we click, the first click defines the plane that we want everything flattened to, and then as we brush, everything flattens out to that plane, and that's essentially what the plane option is doing. Down below this, we have the track curvature option, and the track curvature, um, as best as I can tell, uh, is sort of a, a, a global strength. And at zero, it, it has the most strength, and at 100%, it has, well, less, <laughs> which is kind of odd, but it kind of works like this. I'll go ahead and undo, so I've got that uh, clay tubes deformation on the top. Track curvature is now at 100. If I click to define my plane and begin to drag over this, you'll notice that it doesn't quite grab all of the polygons. With repeat brushings over this, it gets a little bit more and a little bit more, but not quite as much. So with the planar option, this track curvature is less useful. Um, this can be more useful when you're dealing with something like the spline to help maintain a sharper curvature across 90 degree angles. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So I'll go ahead and drop that down. In most cases, I leave this down towards zero and find that it gets pretty good results. And we can just wipe out that deformation. The line option in here allows us to create um, a straight edged line and then to smooth across that. So I'm going to go back over to brush trim dynamic trails and I'm going to turn on the line option. 
and I'm going to sort of rotate my object so I can cle clearly see uh, along that edge. I'll begin to click, that defines my starting point, and then I'll drag this out to the very end point, and then I'll simply pull back along this edge. And you can see that that helps bevel that edge quite nicely. You also notice that the size of your brush helps determine the overall quality or size of the bevel. So a larger brush is going to give us a larger beveled shape. You'll also notice that as we begin to pull towards the end, we can actually break out of that line. And this introduces us to another option inside of Backtrack called Snap to Track. As we turn this on, what this will allow us to do is to pull back and get our beveled shape. Go ahead and rotate that just a little bit more. Sometimes helping to be right <laughs> on the edge. There we go. What that allows us to do is to then begin to pull this edge out. We can move our mouse away and it's still brushing over that edge even though we're not directly over the top of it. You also notice that it also now uh, tends to adhere to that track uh, much better. So it's harder for us to break out of that edge. And that can be useful in a number of different circumstances. So using this line option with something like Trim Dynamic Trails allows us to get a very nice hard surface type of bevel on our objects. The spline option that's in here is intended to go over sharp edges and to create a bevel across these hard edges. So what it allows us to do is to drag out a line and then it will cut down and curve between them. I'm going to go ahead and go to my brush menu and switch over to the planar spline option and hopefully we can get this to work. I'll begin by defining my starting point, clicking and dragging, and then that defines my ending point, and then I'll brush back. And you can see that that then carves across that surface, giving us a curvature in the process. So basically the spline option is creating a starting point and ending point, looking at the curvature in between as far as I can tell, and then interpolating a curve across those, allowing you to get nice beveled shapes. You'll also notice that as I go ahead and do this, as I pull that down and come back, you'll notice that I can't really break out of the line, and that's because the Snap to Track option is turned on. So if I undo this and turn off Snap to Track in a case like this and pull down to define the bevel that I want, and carve that down. I can now move outside of that track and go all the way to the outside edges to round out that shape. Now again we could do this with the clipping brushes but this gives us an extra level of control over our surface. The path option allows us to define a freeform shape. So again I'm going to go back over to brush and use trim dyma dynamic trails which I like to use for the bevels as it seems to produce a pretty good result. I'll reduce my draw size a little bit and I'll switch over to the path option. I'm going to again reduce this track curvature down to zero. The path option allows us to define freeform shapes. So as we click and drag we can define these curves very easily. This allows us to follow shapes like the outer edge of this object. So for example if I start here and begin to click, drag, and draw as I track back, it'll carve that nice beveled edge into that shape. I can continue to rotate and follow the curvature of this, and as long as I don't really change my uh, size of my object on the screen or on the canvas at this point, I can get a pretty nice bevel going across this edge. So you can see that the backtrack options, plane, line, spline, and path 
in conjunction with uh, the various brushes, especially Trim Dynamic Curve, but also looking at the planar brushes, you're going to notice that a whole lot of these exist, so planar cut, uh, planar flatten, planar line, planar path, planar spline. A lot of these are basically brushes that are just customizations of this backtrack option. These backtrack options allow you to um, help get the hard surface shapes uh, out of ZBrush.